Hello, hi, belated Happy New Year and good afternoon to everyone. And thank you for joining us today for the fourth webinar of Go Lean Digital Masterclass on the Digital Business Products and Services Innovation webinar. As the world moves towards the digitized operation in all the business sectors, there are lots of confusions already grooming around it. To address such situations and queries, CMR and BTBT together have been organizing this series of uh, masterclass on lean digital transformation. Today's masterclass is specifically on the topic of digital business products and service innovation and the features of digital products for interactive customer experience management. Hi everyone, I am Shayun De, Senior Editor at Cyber Media Research and your host for the session today. We already did three webinars in this series of masterclass since July and the response was quite overwhelming. Some of you might have already attended a couple of uh, those webinars. And if there are any of you have already attended such webinars, I welcome you back to the fourth one. Before we proceed further, please note that for the overall duration of the session, all the participants will be on listen-only mode. If you have any sort of questions, then please post them directly into the chat window in front of you. We will do a separate Q&A session at the end of the masterclass. In the last masterclass, we got a lot of questions, but where, of course, we are unable to answer them due to time limitations. We have answered a couple of them, but this time I'm hoping we will be able to answer more questions than the last time. To briefly set the context for today's session, as we all know that pandemic made the digital, uh, digital transformation an immediate need. But having, a, but having a sound enterprise digital transformation strategy paints only half of the picture. But in the end, customers are the king, as we all know that. These days, customers are looking for something fresh, something unique regularly, which is shortening the uh, product life. To ensure the customers don't switch to alternative products, very often, you have to provide them what they want and where they want it. The best result can be derived by developing an interactive customer experience model. And to complete the whole picture, organizations must understand and innovate data-driven customized products and services which modern customers are looking for. Our session today focuses on achieving lean digital transformation by designing an optimized customer experience model and also by product and service innovations for the present day digital business. It all looks good and easy on paper, but practically so many questions had to be answered, so many issues had to be addressed and resolved to finalize a positive digital approach. To address all such queries on digital business products and services and innovation, and how it can lead to a better customer experience management, it is my pleasure to introduce you to our expert speaker today, Mr. V. Srinivasa Rao, who is the chairman and MD of BT and BT. Can we please have Mr. Rao on the center screen, please? Welcome, Mr. Rao. Looking good today. Thank you for joining us today. Before I hand over the screen and the attendees to you, allow me to brief a brief introduction about you to our all attendees. Mr. Rao has 26 years of diverse experience in IT industry and has worked in senior executive positions at Indian IT majors like CCS, Infosys, iGate, Satyam, Tech Mahindra, etc. He is not only a business leader, he is also a renowned speaker, he is an author, and he is a techno social entrepreneur. He had authored a great book named Lean Digital Thinking, which you can read on Amazon Kindle. He also acts uh, as the chief digital officer, consultant, and advisor at BT and BT. Welcome again, Mr. Rao. The attendees are waiting for you. The screen is over to you now. Thanks, uh, Sayan. Thanks for uh, that introduction. Okay, thanks to everyone. Uh, I think we have been uh, having these sessions uh, uh, for the I think, last um, four to five months. We covered uh, three topics, uh, very, very important topics like uh, how to design uh, digital businesses and then uh, how to uh, probably bring the operational excellence in today's world. And next, most importantly, for all these things, uh, we need a model, a business excellence model. I also touched upon a lean digital business excellence model. Today, we are going to spend <clears throat> quality time on um, products and services. Now, uh, we are talking about uh, fourth industrial revolution, but if you observe, uh, my view is uh, 2000 to 2020, probably fourth industrial revolution arise over. Now I can say we are into fifth industrial revolution. 
So you might say that we uh, in India not yet ready for fourth industrial revolution. Now you are talking about fifth industrial revolution. Yes, I think now uh, we need to start preparing for fifth industrial revolution. And so what's the difference between these two? I think at a higher level in the fifth industrial revolution, uh, in the next probably it may continue for next 15, 20 years, uh, humans and uh, digital workforce like uh, robots, chatbots, cobots, all uh, work together as a team. We There is no surprise we will introduce uh, the, like HR policies, we will have a digital workforce policies and how we and the digital workers work together and deliver the results. And the second important thing what we see in the next 20 years is the autonomous operations. That means more and more and more we will optimize the human interventions and the work what we do. And third important thing is uh, innovation will have a purpose in the fifth industrial revolution. That means it's not uh, just what we have been doing. I'm sure you agree with me. First, second, third, fourth industrial revolutions, we have done an extraordinary job as humans in the world, if not in India specifically, but we also at the same time impacted the whole environment and compromised the sustainability. If you look at uh, the water resources consumption, the temperature raise, pollution, air pollution, what not. And it is causing a lot of diseases. So it's the time in the fifth industrial revolution that technology should help us to do friendship with nature. And we, are, we already forgot that. So we have to ensure that we, whatever the initiatives we take, they are social, uh, society friendly, environmental friendly, and so on and so forth. So with that note, uh, today I'm going to talk uh, very briefly on products and services, how the technologies are changing the today's, I mean, the product could be anything, right? The product could be a car, a machine, a washing machine could be a product, a chair could be a product, or a bed sheet could be a product. And services could be anything from, there could be healthcare service or a banking service or a retail stores. If you visit, there is a service or not. So I think we need to understand that there is a lot of difference between uh, the traditional products and uh, uh, digital products, traditional services and digital services. So today I'm going to emphasize the difference. But prior to that, why are we talking? Again, it is a recap. I'm sure those people who attended three times might feel this is a bit repetitive, but it's important for newcomers to understand uh, the whole background behind why we are talking about the digital uh, and digitalization and in specific production services today. So look at here. Uh, in the last, I think, uh, 15, 20 years, what is happening is the technologies got converged. In the past, if you look at, uh, for example, I came from information technology space. We all dealt with the data and uh, processed the data and we provided the information. And today we are also saying that not only the information, we provide uh, insight and foresight. That's the role of IT, right? But if you go to operational technologies, probably which I never interacted in the past, or the machine shops, if you take, for example, the shop floors, or any other island uh, uh, gas uh, manufacturing industries, if you look at, there are so many uh, PLCs and machine-to-machine -machine communication, that means the physical objects, machines, equipment, you are automating them to ensure that the capacity is best utilized and you get the information what is required. So the operational technologies deal with the physical objects or physical things. That means you are basically putting the sensors there, some electronic software uh, to enable them to think and so on and so forth. Then there are communication technologies which also got improved in the last 15, 20 years. We are now in 5G. In the next 10 years, we are expecting 6G. Not only that, there are six low pan, Zigbee, Bluetooth, uh, LoRaWAN, short range transportation networks are there. The CT is also collaboration technologies. You have today the metaverse or uh, the virtual reality, telepresence, video conferencing, audio conferencing, whatnot. So when all these things got converged, that's the beauty today. 
IT plus CT plus OT. If it is a life sciences industry, you might also say the biotechnology. So what does it mean? Look at the right side. There are so many technologies are there. They are all talking to each other. They are all communicating each other. That means you are experiencing some unimaginable new capabilities because of, because of this convergence of the technologies. I call it as a modern cyber system. So this modern cyber system are giving so many new capabilities. Let me tell you what are they. So as I said, uh, you can offer the services from anywhere, anytime, using any device, right? That all possible because of this IT plus CT plus OT. That's called omni channel, omni channels, or you can uh, basically call it as a omnipresent. So anywhere means if I'm in a restaurant or a home or a office, it doesn't matter. Anytime, day and night. Any device could be tab, could be game console, could be car console, laptop, tab, or not. So that's what the beauty of uh, all the convergence of this technologies and modern cyber system. The second one is very, very interesting is the hyper-connectivism emerged because of the convergence of technologies. People to people, people to things, and things to things are getting connected. As I mentioned, the digital workers and physical workers are working together. It's not only that, we are able to interact with the air conditioner, we are able to talk to car and whatnot, right? That is, I think, second important uh, thing. The third important thing is, because of this convergence of the technologies, you experience nearly autonomous operations. That means the human interventions will be reduced because of the Internet of Things or artificial intelligence, machine learning, what not, blockchain technologies. Okay, different technologies are coming in and increasing that autonomous quotient. You have self-driving cars came today. And uh, I think in the next probably 10 years, you will see nearly autonomous shop floors, which already happened in China. They removed 90% of their employees, right? And if any transactions are happening, you don't need human interventions because of the blockchain smart contracts. So nearly autonomous, right? Not only that, because of this modern cyber system, we can, I think, predict, right? And we can basically uh, see the future because of the technologies, the data is collected from multiple sources. The data can be from machines, maybe telephone records, maybe social media, maybe transaction systems and maybe wearable devices. I think a lot of, the, and, also, and also maybe getting from external systems like weather um, and uh, cricket information or credit scores, whatnot, right? Of course, based on the context of the businesses. So once you get this much of structured, unstructured, semi-structured data, applying the machine learning algorithms and deep learning algorithms, you are able to predict and see the future. And you are able to see the future performance and even the systems are now uh, having the capability and capacity to prescribe if this is the future because of the current situation the algorithms are telling i think this is better you do it they are all the recommendations right and a few other things like now because of the convergence of these technologies you can communicate from anywhere right the real time communication and collaboration today what we are doing is a very low level of real time communication and collaboration and during covid times also you have seen a lot of businesses are run virtual business operations possible. So what I'm trying to emphasize here is the key message here is the convergence of technologies, individual technologies is only just uh, um, for discussion that is good, but we need to understand what new capabilities emerge because of the convergence of technologies and these new capabilities are changing the whole anatomy of organization. So let me tell you now, so because of this convergence of technologies and modern cyber system, there are three Cs which got emerged. One is the digital is customer. There is a lot of change in the customer expectations. Because of the convergence of technologies, it's not only just at the industries, enterprises, and business side. You also see a lot of change in the customer behavior and expectations. Then the competition is entirely different. Because of the power of convergence of technologies and the new capabilities, there is a new competition emerged. You also need to understand the competition maybe from any corner in the world. 
and third is convergence as i already mentioned the physical and digital worlds are getting converged so let me explain this this will be very much useful for you to understand why the digitalization is required if you are not taking care of digital age customers if you are not understanding digital age competition if you are not leveraging the convergence of physical and digital worlds then the life span of your organization might be very limited so the first one look at here the customer or a person person may play a role of employee customer supplier boss or not right different roles we play in our life but look at here the intensity of what is happening every minute in the internet you probably most of the people might have seen so for every one minute 400 and, sorry 694000 videos viewed on tiktok 21 million snaps created right so and uh, shopping in amazon every minute 283k spent what does it mean the speed at which the interactions are happening the communication collaboration happening is phenomenal so now what is that impacted when you got so much of uh, convenience comfort with the newest technologies like social media mobile phone um, the internet what not and today 5g is also increasing the speed there is a lot of change in the behavior of the customers and expectations of the customers number one they look for continuous newness i'm sure you agree right in the past most of the products uh, the frequency at which they release it versus the frequency at which uh, mobile phones are released you can see the difference not only that different products based on the line of the business customers are looking for continuous newness unless you design new services and new products as per the customer expectations and newness expectations it is very difficult to meet their um, uh, needs the second one is i'm sure the customers tolerance levels are very low if the customer doesn't like your service or a product immediately they go and flash, uh, flash it in the social media then it will reach millions of the people or thousands of people within a fraction of seconds and they will uh, brand you very negatively and they can even change you to the other service provider so uh, that is the second important then is customers are not looking just a service or a product from you when they come to you they are expecting unforgettable moments of experience that means have you ever considered when you are providing a service to the customers what are their emotional needs transactional needs are just completing a task or completing a service request while you are completing that service request have you ever considered whether the customer emotions are taken care their happiness their sadness their unhappiness their emotions their attitudes when they are interacting with you most of the times we don't care them so it is very important nowadays the emotional needs have become very very critical then the purchase decisions are based on internet search if i want to purchase a product today i go to the internet i search i think the multiple pages and see thousands of the people given feedback based on that even movies i am sure today you agree based on the feedback given by thousands of the people we are taking the decision i think this is what the customer so as for the industry or working you just go back and put it on a, a paper or a board saying that who is my customer is there any change in the expectations needs and behaviors of my customer because of this digital technologies and the access what they have to me the second important thing i would like to emphasize is the second c is the convergence which i already spoke convergence means you have the physical world today so we have uh, the infrastructure for example the physical infrastructure is a physical world and uh, we have the mechanical systems and we have the economic system ecology social systems like public health care or public education that is the physical world what we are living today but if you look at the digital world what is that the intelligent things are there that means the intelligent machines intelligent equipment intelligent devices an immersive world like metaverse or virtual reality augmented reality and you have hyper communication collaboration networks artificial intelligence machine learning algorithms creating virtual brains i think this is the digital world and the physical world and digital world now marry you are leveraging the digital world 
making the physical physical world more effective, efficient, and more enjoyable also. So that's where I call it as a physical. Okay, so when these two worlds got conversed, uh, your human interventions will be reduced, your safety will be increased, your cost will be reduced, and your speed at which you can offer the services to the customers, the quality also improve. So the second question, I think, when you go back to your office or home, put it on a board, okay, with the physical and digital worlds, convergence, what is that impact it will be on my businesses, on my customers, on my suppliers, on my employees? I think just ask that fundamental question. This is the second C. The third C is very interesting if you look at the traditional organizations. If you are a traditional, maybe 30 years, 20 years, you have been in the industry, you are not a born digital. You are a digital immigrant, for example. That means the digital technologies are not the driving forces for you. They were only the technologies were only enablers in the past. Now let us look at the digital dragons like Google, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, Microsoft. They are digital dragons. They are the born digitals. Now slowly they are getting into in the industry, right? As I said, Apple is getting into automotive, Google is getting into automotive, Amazon is getting into smart cities. Amazon is also getting into brick and mortar real estate, but with modernization, digitalization. So what not, right? And digital lizards are the tech startups. I mean, let us look at a very interesting example in the fintech. Uh, the payment businesses, we are doing today the payments through some other systems not relating to the banks, whether the Google Pay, whether Paytm or PayPal or not, right? And healthcare startups, manufacturing startups. So these startups and these digital dragons and digital lizards are slowly encroaching into your field. Not only that, who are progressive in our line of business. If you are from manufacturing, there are some manufacturing companies which are very progressive, forward-looking, forward-thinking. They also have competition. If you are sandwiched in these three, then how do you stay relevant? In today's digital age, they are slowly encroaching. How to compete with these guys? And how do you create new business opportunities and business performance? If you are living in the world of traditional way of doing the businesses, not leveraging that modern cyber system, what I explained. And if you don't understand the new age customers and the convergence of physical and digital world, new age competition, you will be out of the business. So with all this context, what is the impact on the products and services? I think what sort of new products you have to design, what sort of new services you have to design, that is the, I think, discussion we are going to have. So last time also I explained, because of the modern cyber system, and the unimaginable new capabilities which emerged from the modern cyber system, unfortunately or fortunately, it is touching the whole anatomy of organization. This is the anatomy. It will change your vision. It will change your business models because you have new capabilities. And it will change your strategies. And you probably need to look at how to quantify the success of your businesses today vis-a-vis -vis yesterday, I mean, the past traditional businesses. So you need to ask the modern cyber system capabilities, how it is going to impact my, this blueprint, I call it as. Today's topic, we'll talk in detail products and services. Then the modern cyber system and these new capabilities also impacting your workplaces. I'm sure if you look at the shop floor, it got completely changed, right? If you go to the retail store, you have a, uh, AR mirror, right? Augmented reality mirror, and you are experimenting different attires. That is a different workplace. Mining could be a different workplace, right? So workplaces are changing because of the modern service system. The processes are completely changing. If you look at supply chain process today, don't you think integrating Internet of Things, blockchain, artificial intelligence, machine learning, the whole supply chain process is becoming hyper intelligent and smarter. Uh, you are able to deliver faster and you are able to track them, right, in the transit, and especially for perishable goods or not. Like that, the CRM processes are getting changed. Today, the metaverse has become a very important element in the customer relationship management process to provide a better experience. So you need to also look at how the processes are changing, how the operating models are changing, the organization structure, the way you communicate. Uh, you don't need to travel now. I think you can just have a communication and, and your decision making is not based on your, your intelligence or your team intelligence, also by artificial intelligence. 
That means your decisions are powered by machine learning and uh, the deep learning algorithm. So the operating models are changing. Finally, the technology foundation also will change. So when somebody says that I want to become digital, the whole anatomy is changing, of course, based on your mission, based on your leadership bandwidth, your budget availability, your internal skills and constraints you choose, and your based on your customers, competition, and all factors you consider and choose. Oh, I think it is a huge. Let me focus on my process, maybe supply chain, or let me focus on my, I have five products, I'll focus on product. That's your choice based on your organization requirements. So this is what a, a context setting I want to do for every session, even it is repetitive. So to summarize now, the technology has got converged. IT plus CT plus OT plus BT, whatever. New capabilities got emerged. And the convergence is not only giving new capabilities, it created three Cs. A new digitalized consumers or customers with new expectations, convergence of physical and digital world, and created a new competition. If you want to address these three Cs, you have to look at the whole anatomy of your organization. And based on the priorities of that, you need to uh, ensure that the modern cyber system capabilities are used to re-engineer, re-imagine, reconfigure your whole anatomy and of course your priorities, okay? So how do you do that? This is a very important thing which I have been, I think I have been preaching. Digitalization and that to digitalizing these uh, 12 building blocks, I call it as anatomy, doesn't work, right? So you must acquire a new mindset. You must acquire a new thinking. There are so many thinkings available today, design thinking, critical thinking, systems thinking, computational thinking. But I introduced something, I also wrote a book on that called Lean Digital Thinking. So this is what I call Lean Digital Thinking. These 12 principles, if you understand and apply on any of these building blocks, I can apply those 12 principles on product. I can apply those 12 principles on my process then that is complete digitalization. If those principles are embedded and integrated. A few principles I will read out for you, for example. So predict and improve business performance, okay? Take a product today. How do you predict and improve the product performance? Today, a lot of data is coming from products, right? Whether it is a washing machine or a, um, air conditioning, uh, air conditioner and all. That data you are using, and even you are able to tell going forward, hey, this is going to fail and come and repair. So you are able to get the sort of performance in real time. You are able to predict the performance and systems are able to recommend you also to avoid having a failure, what needs to be done. This is one principle whenever you design anything is a process or a product or a service or a business model. Are you considering this predicting uh, and improving business performance principle in our mind? The second one is optimize human interventions. Okay, you have to design a workplace or you want to design a process, then ask a question. Are you, am I basically optimizing human interventions? Technologies may come later, but this is a principle. You might optimize using Internet of Things, blockchain, AI, ML, whatnot. There are so many technologies. Up. But as a business leader, you need to understand that if I say I am digital or my product is digital, my process is digital, oh, did I optimize human interventions in that? product or process or workplace. Then, other important thing probably you can look at is eliminate non-value adding activities. That means digital enterprises, you build it up. For example, a product is there. I have um, uh, met uh, uh, advanced manufacturing technology development center at IAD Magros, which is, so they did a wonderful job. So a machine was there, which has, I think, uh, 30 sensors. They made it just simple five. Right? This is called a non value adding task there. Unnecessarily, 30 sensors you are using, or you are collecting too much of the data, which is of no use, right? Or you are having so many approval mechanisms are there in the past. But with blockchain smart contracts, probably I can eliminate that sort of non value adding activities. So you need to ask fundamentally a question in my process or in my workplace, any non value adding activities are. Like this, I think. Uh, there are 12 principles if you look at here. 
This is called lean digital thinking. Acquiring this mindset is very critical for you if you want to think digitally and apply that on any of these concepts. By applying all these things, now look at here. So, for example, you want to assess a product or a service against these 12 principles. So, we introduced something called lean digital quotient. So, we will assess this any of these building blocks need not be all a service or a product or process and then against the 12 principles and finally you will give a lean digital quotient of a process maybe a supply chain process or maybe a washing machine or maybe a customer acquisition service whatever so i think you can have a maturity here so very very important for you is without knowing where you are out of these 12 building blocks, you cannot really reach the benchmark. Then benchmark becomes like a dream only. You don't know where you are. So that's where it is very important we are emphasizing. Today we are talking about a product or a service. You have an existing product. Today morning, I met one of one young guy. He was telling that they are retrofitting the trucks to make them uh, intelligent and electrical also. Right? That means they will have IoT sensors, and a bit of AML and also the electric motors, they replace probably the fuel engine, right? So, but where you are, you have to understand today this particular truck is like this, but you should also have the benchmarking practices. That benchmarking practices are derived from these 12 principles, okay? So now let us look at now with all this background. So what is a digital product? If I apply those uh, lean digital thinking principles on the product, summary i'm giving but it is very detailed look at here this is what my um, understanding of a digital product product here could be a car a machine a baby diaper a chair or a bed sheet whatever so first thing is the product is it able to sense think and communicate and provide insight okay i always tell one example even it is repetitive there is a bed sheet and the bed sheet has the sensors it can sense, it can think with the electronic chip, and it can uh, um, uh, communicate how much time you slept or what is the body health indicators, right? And that is one. So like that, you have uh, baby diapers today. They can sense, they can think, they can communicate. So baby diapers are having the sensors, there is a chip, and uh, uh, read the uh, blood pressure, temperature, wetness of that and communicate through 5G to the mobile phone of the parents at office probably, they can see it. So if you want to qualify as a digital product, you should be uh, having this particular characteristics. Then nowadays, the products, uh, digital products also, you can offer as a service. A coffee vending machine is there today. Nobody is purchasing them, right? Even cars, I think BMW, they are given as service. I don't need to have a capital expenditure. Why it is possible? Because your usage pattern is known. The technology is helping you to provide. As a BMW, I know what is the usage pattern. And probably based on that, you can change the different things. So you have the access to your car anywhere in, the, anywhere in the world. So you can read how the car performance and how the driver is and whether the car is properly maintained or not and how much you properly uh, rent it, uh, whether you want to increase the rent because their driving behavior is not good and all. So products are now offered as a service because of that smartness, intelligence, and uh, other features available. Then they have to be secure and safe because when you are connected to internet, having sensors and all, the hacking and all those things are possible today. Uh, some demonstration has done. The cars are hacked today, which are, the car is nothing but having uh, um, maybe a 10 million lines of software code. It is a big software system today, a car which can be easily hacked. So you have to ensure that they are safeguarding. Necessary precautions are taken. Then you can monitor and control your products. If you take a generator, for example, I am here as a company and generator is at the office. I can easily monitor the generator performance remotely. I can even control some of the things remotely. Nigeria, there are oil bricks and walls. And in San Francisco, uh, 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 in California, uh, so the uh, Chevron is able to monitor the walls which are in Nigeria. They are able to even control them sitting here, 
right? I think that that feature is not there for our product. Then your product is not a digital. Product. Then your digital product, whatever you design, it should be social socially responsible. Probably it should uh, reduce uh, a fuel consumption and it should uh, create less impact on the health and environment and so on and so forth. Finally, if you call your product as uh, a digital product, it must have some features like you should be able to predict its performance, I already mentioned, and you should be able to have a preventive and predictive maintenance. In some of the industries, if you look at, especially I think in the cement industry, if any machine is down, it is a huge work. The second one, in US, the rail company has done a proof of concept long back. I think today it might become very operational. So they are able to track. Um, if the, at the track side of the track, they put so many sensors, a visual sensor, infrared sensor, noise, voice sensor, microphone, and vibration sensor, temperature sensor, and all. When the train is going on the track, the wheels are basically monitored and the temperature of the wheel, the curvature of the wheel, the noise coming from the bearings, and all other parameters are taken well in advance. And those parameters are sent to the central command center where they have the uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence algorithms. It will tell the train may derail. Once it is derailed, it is too much of the work and even you lose lives. Same thing for ATM machines today, you are able to predict if there is a temperature emitting too much from the machine and the belt wear and tear is too high or noise is coming. Based on those parameters, you can expect that this belt may cut after probably a few weeks or it may get into a problem, go and repair. So you can go proactively and repair it. Rather, it is failed and unnecessarily causing customer dissatisfaction and putting too much of a money to repair it. Right? So the power of modern cyber system, I think you imagine here. So you need to fundamentally ask a question, what are all these features I can bring into my digital product? But to get these features, you need to think digitally. That's where I said lean digital thinking you have to apply. And then beyond this also, you might get few more ideas. OK, this I call it as a digital product. So now coming to the services. OK, services are very interesting, right? It could be banking service or healthcare service or uh, um, hospitality service, whatever, right? So with the modern cyber system, unimaginable new capabilities, applying lean digital thinking, I want to have a service to qualify as a digital service when I have these things. Number one, are you able to provide the service from anywhere, anytime using any device? That's called omni-channel. If I want to see my bank account today, it's possible, right? Like that, from your services perspective, you need to ask a question for my customers and employees probably, if I am able to uh, enable them to do the work from anywhere, anytime, using any device. Today, the services are immersive. If I want to go to one of the tourist location, some of the companies may offer, I will wear a VR headset and get into metaverse, in that metaverse, I completely experience the tourist, tourist spot, but virtually I like it, then I can book a ticket, right? The service of this, this is called an immersive experience. Before you even book the ticket for the tourist spot, you are experiencing it probably using VR headset in the metaverse. Once you get that experience, then you can go and enjoy that. So not only this, a lot of, lot of uh, use cases might be there, for immersive experience in uh, different uh, industries. Then customers are expecting, as I mentioned, if your service is not integrated with uh, meeting their emotional needs also. Emotional needs are different from transactional needs or task needs are just get the work done. You call the help desk, they complete the work, but they held at you, they were rude with you, then that's not a great experience to you, but the task is complete. But when you get unforgettable moments of experience, when you call the help desk, without you, even you tell, they will greet you, they will uh, retrieve all the details of yours, and they talk to you very politely, for example, all those things, whatever, right? Human angle, the emotions angle has to be integrated with uh, 
uh, the services, personalized. Then do it yourself has become a norm today, right? Organizations are encouraging customers to do themselves. And if any services you want to offer, if somebody wants to get some information, I think it is expected real time response and resolution. That's where the chart bots came, our charts are there, our video calls have come along. Finally, the socially responsible, even our services. So you have to consider these elements and attributes while designing a digital service. So you have to ask a fundamental question, what are all these features I can integrate with my services as per my customer needs? Probably you might need only two or three here. Okay. So this is, I call it as a digital service. Okay. The other important thing I said, when you are offering the services to the products or when you are selling the products to the customers, I think it is very important, as I mentioned, you have to offer unforgettable moments of experience. Emotional needs are important. Just take here an example of how you avail the loan. The old way of getting the loan, the left side you got website. I can interact with the bank through any channels, right? Website, help desk, email, branch, mobile device, or social media, chatbot today. Look at those, uh, the interaction points, the life cycle is given on the top, right? So what are all the steps you follow as a customer? And the interaction points are given in the circles. That means one, two, three, four, five, six, seven interaction points. If you are not offering a better experience by meeting the emotional needs of the customer, the sum total of experience is capital. Six places you have done a great job, but seven place you have not done a great job, right? So is it, this is called a customer journey map. At each circle there, you have to ask what is the experience you are uh, giving to the customer. That is a big subject. Customer experience design, like you design your product, like you design your service. Today, you have to design experience when offering that service to the customers at each interaction point. Whether it is through help desk, whether you are interacting through email for a particular purpose or not. Then you have to create a new journey map and a new experiences and improve that experience. That's where the point I'm trying to emphasize here. In summary, so what I'm trying to tell here is uh, you need to uh, look at the digital products which are intelligent, smart, and uh, uh, provide the better services from anywhere, anytime using any devices, personalized with immersive experiences. And at every touch point with the customer, you ensure that you provide unforgettable moments of experience. All these things are possible when you apply lean digital thinking on your existing services or products and know where you are. What is the lean digital portion? Identify digital strengths and digital weaknesses of your product or service. Then you work out how to overcome the weaknesses by overcoming those problems and how to create opportunities or possibilities from the strengths. That's where the technologies will come into picture, okay? So just to summarize, if you are from a technology organization, you have to relook at, as I said, the anatomy is huge. Today, we might have spoke about only products and services, but there are 12 building blocks are there. So you have to move from this information technology mindset to a digital technology mindset. Your strategies must be convergence, IT plus CT plus OT, governance, architecture, and your applications also, software applications, more and more, four categories of applications you have to develop. Uh, you have to design, build, and operate. Systems of records, which have been there for the last 50, 60 years, process automations. Systems of engagement, as I mentioned, the emotional needs. How do you take care? That might be integrated with the systems of records. Systems of things means the Internet of Things. As I said, the physical things are getting light. They can able to sense, think, and communicate. And systems of intelligence means a lot of data is coming in. So you can able to predict and prescribe a lot of insight, foresight. You get artificial intelligence, machine learning. Unless you acquire the skills to design, build, and operate these four categories of applications and integrate them, you will never become digital. You can't build digital products, you can't build digital processes, you can't build digital services. If these foundation blocks are missing, you can forget about it, okay? So this is where I said, today probably, my estimation, process automation, I think ERPs or legacy could be 70%, maybe IoT related 
and people, emotions, and engagement related, 15%, they are all integrated. And finally, there might be 10% these systems of insight might be there. So these things will change. More and more systems of things, systems of engagement might uh, increase, and systems of records probably might be constant. All right, so I think that's it. Let us conclude. Uh, so understand the digital features of products and services. Find the lean digital quotient of your products and services. Establish a technology platform to introduce them and build supporting software applications. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Mr. Rao, for the interesting session. I personally love the part where you explain why any present day products must address the emotional expectations of the customers today. So I do see a couple of questions are coming up. So it is time we move to the next segment of this webinar, the Q&A session. Are you ready for it? Hello? Sorry? Are you ready for moving to the Q&A part? Yeah, 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 please, go ahead. Okay, okay. So our first question is, when can we hope to have autonomous factories among MSMEs in India, which will immune to any kind of disruptions like pandemic? Can you put any light into that? See, you are talking about uh, MSME. Um, I think it is very difficult. It will take a lot of time. Um, it's not easy to make uh, MSMEs autonomous <clears throat> because the reason is, uh, the amount of money they have to invest in the beginning might be more. That's where I think I have been proposing there should be a cluster approach. Even the facilities probably might be built by somebody to, uh, you might be having great designs, but manufacturing facilities can in the beginning, if not uh, this one. It is like a shared services, right? So there you can have the intelligent factories with uh, robotics and uh, uh, the conveyors or whatever, I mean, the different parameters. But as you, as a small company, can you do it yourself? I doubt in the beginning. But, but, so business is not just only the shop flow. You have customer relationship management process, you have supply chain relationship process, you have inventory process and all. Certainly those things can be hyper automated. Even those things I propose, MSMEs have to form a clusters and then they can share, share the cloud infrastructure cost or software infrastructure, software as a service cost. So I think uh, the MSMEs have to look at a different strategy, like what is very mission critical for my business? What is the common? I don't need to worry about that. Maybe it is a travel, maybe HR induction, or maybe some other very financial management and all. There are common processes which are required for your businesses, right? There you can go a shareable model, but your design is very unique and you want to have something very, very a different process and all, such type of things you have to go your, your own. So share and shared services, I think, is the key. And as a service is another key. Don't invest your own money and uh, get it a rental rather putting capital expenditure. I think oh. it is a long way to go. That's my personal opinion. Because the mindset of uh, MSMEs have to change a lot because a lot of things, especially M, that means the micro and small, uh, uh, the promoters, I think two or three or four guys will drive and uh, the others even don't have the voice. It's very dominated. And uh, still some of the people think that Excel sheet is okay. One of the companies, uh, 300 crore companies still using Excel sheet. Okay, so I think uh, a lot of mindset change is required. Uh, automation era is over. Now you got into the next level. So you jump directly to the digitalization. A lot of difference between these two. That calls for a very different kind of discussion though. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So the next question is, um, can you mark out some key points on how to create a journey map for developing digital services, which address to customer emotional values? See, I think, uh, you have a services, right? Service one, service two, service three, whatever. Okay, like account opening is a service, for example. Okay, so uh, it should be automated in my view if required, but practically how do you automate and all is the second step, second step now. So there are different age groups of the customers are there, or different like uh, Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Zs of the world and baby boomers and all. 
So you have to ask a fundamental question. If a gen, a baby boomer wants to open an account, okay, they prefer probably going to the bank. Probably, right? Probably they don't understand how to go to the internet site and open and all. So that means you have to capture the journey of that baby boomer separately. That journey involves the channels, what they have, and the uh, uh, like going to the branch and then interacting with the these guys and then coming back and probably talking over phone to get whether they got it or not or email interaction. But if you go to probably the Gen uh, Zs or Gen Zs, it is maybe entirely different. They might operate through mobile app or chatbot and uh, everything uh, probably in a different. So you have to first capture who is my customer, who are all the segments of customer, and for each segment, the journey map of what channels they are using and how the life cycle is completed. Okay, then you got those circles what I shown, right? That means the touch points. The touch points are called interaction points. At those interaction points, you have to ask what are the activities the customers perform at that interaction point. Okay, baby boomer come to a branch. That means he has to take a form, he has to write it. There are so many things, right? So then you have to fundamentally ask at that interaction point, is there any way, whether physically or uh, technologically, provide a better experience to them when they are in the branch? That means what are all those emotional needs you have to understand when you are designing the system itself or when you are establishing a physical structure itself in the bank, for example. These are all the emotional needs I think I have to take care. Probably a little bit coffee you might give or if there is a small... I think uh, cafe coffee nearby, I mean, the banks might establish a small cafeteria with six people capacity, probably. Then the staff might say, hey, sir, welcome, sir. I think it will take 10 minutes to please go and take the coffee. That is the emotional need. It's not always technology. It's also people behavior, attitude, right? So that is one way. Okay, I want to probably in communicating through uh, electronically through web or mobile, then probably you might come on video and I can have a very good interaction. It's like a emotional connect and talking to them. If I'm stuck with something, then you can take it, right? I think, so the summary here is identify customer, customer segments, each segment, draw the journey map, identify the touch points, each touch point, capture the emotional needs when you are going for a new service or existing service, and try to see the emotional needs, how you can realize through technology, through people service, through people, through process modifications, et cetera. Okay, that was quite nice. That, that is the ocean, a journey map and experience design. Like PLM, product life cycle management, <clears throat> uh, you have to become an expert in experience life cycle management. Exactly. So let's move to the third question, which looks quite interesting to me. How to minimize the security concerns while developing more and more smart products, the digital products, which share user data? It is a commonly asked question around. See, the security uh, perspective, the bad is always stronger than good. If somebody asks who is the best program manager in the world, people say that uh, Osama Bin Laden. But he used it for a bad uh, thing, right? He doesn't have any communication network and he doesn't have a great, I think, teams and all. But still, he, I think, uh, did it. Very bad and uh, I think it is a very um, uh, great loss to the humanity. So, but uh, what is the point... Uh, um, sorry, the question is what? I lost somewhere. The question is how to minimize all the security concerns. Why uh, do security. Become... So the what point here is the bad is always stronger than good. So we have to understand that first assumption. You can never and never prevent any incidents happen. That is the mindset you have to acquire. Hmm. I met with uh, Chevron CEO. He said it is impossible to prevent. But you always have to have a preventive measures. The preventive measures can be done through a great security policies, governance, and uh, processes, number one. Okay. Then number two, the software and hardware mechanisms, what you have to take to ensure that the security is taken care. You are writing a code, for example. In the code itself, today there is something called a SecOps. Like DevOps, right? There is a SecOps security operations. So during the development of all these machines, equipment, software and all, ensure that the security related code is also injected or embedded into the software. Okay, that is the second one. And third, what sort of firewalls you put it in, right? What security related things you take in. And fourth is the proper training to your employees, what needs to be done and all, right? 
So, and last but not least is, as I said, prevention is impossible, but you have to acquire the skills in such a way, able to detect if any incidents, take preventive steps that anyhow you can do, but sometimes the incident happens. Maybe Sony, for example, they hacked, right? And uh, they lost millions of dollars, but how faster you bounce back. The disaster recovery and the business continuity mechanisms, most of the people consider natural disasters and all. No, the security disaster is most dangerous now. If somebody hacks and stop your operations, you are gone. So how faster your existing teams can be mobilized, the emergency response team can be mobilized, the blue team or red team and all, and make sure that your operations up and running faster. That means you have some other disaster recovery site is available. Maybe temporary services can be up and running, even this is hacked or not. So all those things you have to, this is a very expensive and I think a, a complex topic to be factored. So the cost goes up, but your running cost might go down, but initial capital cost goes up. Okay. So in short, preventive measure is the best way to go for. And keep so preventive measure is best, but when you basically experience any incident and bounce back, the something like how do you uh, uh, return to the normalcy at the fastest rate you have to set up the infrastructure you have to set up the uh, tools you have to set up the people trained people processes exactly. incident management and all speed is paramount speed is, paramount. Hmm? speed is also paramount thing at the end that is the most otherwise you are gone i mean a couple of days business loss is the millions of dollars lost for some companies right especially exactly. banks for example right exactly so it was a nice and fruitful conversation, I must say. And with this, we come to an end for today's session. Good. I hope all our attendees have found it helpful. If there are any more questions, uh, or if you want to interact with the uh, VSR directly in a in an one to one uh, interaction, the, uh, then please feel free to mail those queries directly to us. You can find my email ID on the chat window. Uh, so at the end, thank you, Mr. Rao, for sparing your valuable time with us again. And thank you to all our attendees for joining us today. I hope you found it useful. Before everyone leaves, we request you to uh, fill up the feedback form. And this time, we would like to know which topic related to the digital transformation you would like to attend the more detailed workshops on next time. We have mentioned the various areas in feedback form. So do fill it up and let us know what interests you the most. A warm thank you to everyone again for sparing your valuable time with us. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a nice weekend ahead. Goodbye for now, everyone. Thank you.